What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of the uh, A86 SR5 to GTS conversion. Um, if you're new here, this is the 86 right here. It's been a fully restored already, and it's been painted. Uh, engine has been rebuilt uh, completely, and um, now I'm just trying to set it up. And uh, what what I've been having issues with is my uh, throttle position throttle position sensor. Um, and the ECU has been throwing a, uh, a code 7 and 11 at times. So um, what I'm going to do in this video is set up the throttle position sensor properly and go through that whole process and, and also the timing as well. Uh, because they're kind of related in a way because you cannot set the timing properly with the, with a, with the throttle position sensor not being uh, set up correctly as well. So, um, you know, I haven't seen, I've seen uh, some pretty good videos on the throttle position sensor, but I haven't seen them uh, in connection with the, the setting up the timing um, because there's a couple tricks that you need to do. Um, well, not tricks, but you know, you have to, you know, the only way to set the timing properly on a 4AG is to um, do it in while the car is in diagnostics mode. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do all that. And uh, so if you uh, are interested in that, uh, stay tuned. Here we go. Alright guys, like a lot of times, you're going to get this code right here, if you have a bad TPS, if you look at your check engine light, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then wait 3 seconds, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Wait three seconds and then it'll repeat seven blinks again. Um, that generally means you got a bad uh, throttle position sensor, and um, or it's not adjusted correctly. Um, so um, we're gonna try to fix that and get this thing back, get this thing into diagnostics mode so we can properly set the timing. All right. All right, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna demonstrate how to set up your throttle body. Uh, this is a spare throttle body I, I got off of an MR2. Um, so if it looks different in a little bit, you know, don't worry about that or, you know, it's kind of dirty, but um, it's just a spare one that I have. I, I actually filmed all this with my throttle body that I have, but uh, somehow that footage got lost, so. Uh, it seems like that always happens uh, at the most inconvenient times, but um, I guess I actually it didn't get lost. I, I probably accidentally deleted it thinking that I had already uh, had it edited and saved um, on accident. So anyways, long story short, here, here we're going to um, just demonstrate to you how to set the throttle body up. Uh, first of all, let me show you um, the throttle, the throttle plate inside here. You don't want that to be closed all the way at idle. You want it to be open just to crack. You know, just to let a little bit of air in. And um, this is where John D from uh, John D86 from Club 4 AG helped me out. Um, gave me a little tip here. So the basic idea is to here you have your throttle body, and in on the front here you have your uh, screw that adjusts this throttle plate right here. And there's a rod that goes all the way through, all the way to your throttle position sensor. So this is all connected right here. And uh, and your throttle cable actually, you know, pulls this lever, and that's when your everything opens up, and that's when the magic happens. So, but how to set it up to where to, where to start from? What we need to do is first I'm going to go ahead and, and there's a, see that nut right there. I'm going to loosen that up. And inside there's an Allen key. I forgot what size. I don't, I'm not really sure what size it is, but it's pretty small. And that is going to be able to adjust your. Once you unloosen that, once you loosen that nut, nut you're going to be able to then, you know, adjust this 
the throttle arm, the threads, back it off to where it's not touching that anymore. So the throttle plate is fully closed with that spring. All right, then what we're gonna do is get a piece of magazine paper, preferably something not crinkled like this, but um, you know, I'm just gonna do this for demonstration purposes. You want it nice and flat, the, the paper. We're gonna open this up and insert the, new, insert the magazine paper on the bottom section. And now you can see it's closed all the way and you cannot yank this out, otherwise the magazine will tear, okay? So what we're going to do is just tight, go clockwise on that until you can pull this magazine out, magazine paper out. So I'm going to use two hands because I'm going to turn this and, and put a little pressure on, on the paper at the same time. That way I can, it'll come out. Nice and easy. Okay, just, you, you want a little bit of drag. You don't wanna get it too open, just like that. Okay, you see how that, that just pulled out? Let me do it again. You see how it's dragging? Like that. Okay, so now, you can even do the flashlight test. Um, what he has mentioned as well get in a dark room put a little light on the back side of here and you'll be able to see light around the rings okay I'll try to do this here in the in the light but works a lot better at nighttime see how the flashlight you can kind of see the light coming through barely coming through like that Okay, that's kind of what you want right there. So you have your throttle position sensor right here. What you want to do is you want to you want to loosen these screws, the top one and the bottom one, and um, you'll need a little stubby screwdriver in order to get to it because um, it's everything's in the way here. And also, I had to take off my little breather uh, vent tube there, uh, disconnect it from the intake manifold, and then uh, now I'll be able to get my leads on there. You want to put your, um, you want, I just got a cheap um, multimeter, uh, digital multimeter from uh, Harbor Freight, and uh, what I've done is I've put these little, because these little these are so small these terminals let me show you a spare see here's a spare one that I have um, it's no good um, but these see how small those little terminals are see how small those terminals are um, so I had to get these little alligator clips so that they'll fit and these are like extra small these are smaller than the ones that that you can just buy at AutoZone or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know if these are actually, I don't know if they have these at, at uh, like a regular auto parts store, but I had to go to an electronics store to get mine, to get these. Um, and uh, they, they will clip on the, and I just have the other end clipped to the, you know, in a spare wire, clipped to that lead. And this, uh, the red one goes to the top, and the black one goes to the second one down. So you got the top and then the second one down. All right, and now over here on this side, um, according to the service manual, and I'll put the page up right here, you need a 0.47, it's a feeler gauge is what it is, I'm sorry. Okay, and the factory service manual has, um, you know, the, the, the clearance that you need in imperial or millimeter. Um, so, but I'm just gonna use this, it's close enough to the 0.47. Um, and that goes, this goes right down here. All right, you see that idle screw on the right side and that little lever, that's a metal lever. 
not this one but this one here all right you want to have the feeler gauge in in that in between that that little uh, and I'll let me set it up real quick see how that the feeler gauge is now in between that lever and the, the uh, screw all right now let's come back over here all right now we're going to take our red wire plug it to the top on the throttle position sensor the top prong so, well actually let's do the let's do the second one first that way it's easier to get to if I put the top one in it's gonna be hard to get up underneath it all right make sure that it's not touching any other lead that's the hard part here's the top one all right that's good now and make sure that back here these aren't touching as well because it'll give you a false reading now and you want to make sure that they don't they're not touching any other metal as well I, I guess I'm, I'm I'm thinking that probably will throw it off as well so um let's turn our gauge on here and I have it set to I have the black wire going to the com and I have the red wire where the uh, omega sign is and um, that's our resistance all right and then I have this dial on the omega testing resistance and I have it set to about 2000 right here okay so let me see if I can set this here and I'm able to show you all right whoops where'd he go okay so now we have about you know 030029 rotating there between those two and some it might jump around for a little bit you know just a little bit but um and you have you have this throttle position sensor you loosen these screws up to where you can you can turn this all the way counterclockwise to where it's it's maxed out on one side all right and then what we want to do is we're just going to slowly you know keep tighten this just to where you can you can still move this very slightly you can see it doesn't take much to change that um, but basically what we're going to do is just rotate this throttle position sensor until you get a one. All right. And then come back and you just want to rotate it. You want to find right where it turns to one. And that, that is where you want to tighten your throttle position sensor down. Okay. So. Let me see. All right. I guess that's it right there. So it didn't turn much before it turned to one. So let me tighten it down. All right, now that we have um established where our TPS needs to be set um, there's a way to check this if you look here in the factory service manual it actually shows you at um, 0.35 millimeters right here 0.35 millimeters um, you will have continuity and at 0.58 you will not have continuity so I'm going to set those into that idle screw uh, between the idle screw and that lever again and we'll watch our gauge and see what happens ok 
Okay, that's 0.35. That's the that's the gauge, and it's um, still reading uh, our continuity. So nothing changed. Now, when I put the 0.59 in, it should it should go to one. All right, yep, there it is. Of course, I had to open it up just to get the gauge in. That's why it went before I actually put the gauge in. But as long as it doesn't go back to um, below one, um, you know, with the gauge in place, then it should, it should be set up right. So hopefully now I'll be able to get this car in a diagnostics mode to where I can properly set the timing, um, you know, because if you can't get the car into diagnostics mode, you cannot properly set the timing on this car. So let me show you a little diagram. Maybe it'll make it easier to understand. We set it up at 0.49. Uh, that's the point of continuity and not non-continuity. Okay, so if you were to put the gauge in at 0.59, then you will have, it will be past the, um, the middle point to have uh, no continuity and 0.35 will be before it so it will be um, at the point to where it has continuity uh, so maybe this little uh, illustration will, will help you see that better in case I didn't uh, explain it well enough Okay, now I have this, I, I went ahead and set up this uh, TPS off camera because I've already shown you how to do that while it was on the car. Um, so the other test that you want to do after you have the TPS set up is to test your throttle position sensor. Um, on your throttle position sensor here you have, this is your E2, the second one is IDL, third one is VTA, and fourth one is VCC. Now, I have no idea what those stand for, but that's just what the owner's manual has them listed as. So when you, and it shows you how to test this as well. So uh, when you plug in with, and I remove the feeler gauge, okay, from the, uh, from the backing here. So when you, when you connect the uh, VTA with the black wire, which is your third one. Right there and then you have your E2 which is the top one just like that okay and we're gonna test the throttle position sensor how it responds to when there is a throttle being given all right so when I turn this all right so at the VTA and, and E2 okay it's it's plugged in now at full throttle I should have anywhere between 3.3 and 10 okay so let's go ahead with it wired up we're gonna go ahead and start turning this you can see that start to increase gradually as I turn all right now that's wide open throttle right there and we're, we are at 4.7 okay so that's good it's still within spec between 3.3 .3 and 10 it's at 4.7 okay now our next test is VTA and E2 just at resting position like this all right that's when that's how we set up our throttle body remember with the uh, with the magazine paper so we still have we just it's plugged in already we're reading at 0 0.52 0 0.5 so we're looking good there as well all right so that's good and our last test is our VCC and E2 so we're gonna take we're gonna leave the E2 plugged in we're gonna take this third one off and put it on the very bottom one that's the VCC all right and we should get bet between three and seven okay so let's clip it there 
and there our gauge goes up to 5, 5.05 .05. so that's within spec as well alright so we're looking good there okay so now we know our throttle position sensor is good we got it got it working good and well, this throttle body is also set up as well so that's how you set that up now we just need to install it of course I've already done all that uh, I would have been able to do this more chronologically had I not lost that footage so I apologize for that but um, I guess now now we're gonna just go um, from here we're gonna go to the timing section and I'm gonna show you this right here is a bad throttle position sensor all right you can test all the put it up to the E2 right here right here VCC or V VTA and there's it just gives a one all right turn this right here nothing happens you know I tried setting it up here's the VCC and the E2 nothing happens so it's not doing anything so we know this is bad so we'll go ahead and throw that in the trash All right, so um, I'm going to disconnect the negative terminal and the battery, and let's go to, let me show you how I've connected the, uh, this is a Zen key harness, so um, I just jump, jumpered the wires there. I made a little, you know, two male uh, prong there, and uh, plugged it into the that uh, smaller plug back there so now we disconnect the battery so we can clear the codes that it had okay so let's go ahead and reconnect the battery be good for now and let's cross our fingers come in here shut the door just to... for some reason okay all right so you remember how it was giving me a blinking seven times and then also 11 times here we go blink oh that's a good sign right there come on blink again there okay good one two three blink yes that's exactly what we want. This car is in diagnostics mode, my friends. Golly. Oh, that's nice. Woo! That feels good. Okay, and with the uh, blinking light, with the engine uh, check engine light blinking uh, once every three seconds, um, that's exactly what you want. Uh, that that shows that the um, the TPS is is adjusted correctly, and that the car is in di a diagnostics mode uh, in a normal diagnostics mode. So um, that means we can set the timing. Okay, I got my diagnostics plug shorted there, or, or uh, not shorted, but uh, I got it jumped. All right, and you can see my light, engine light is, that's good. It's blinking once every three seconds, so that means we are in diagnostics mode. And I have my timing. If you have a timing light, make sure that you set this correctly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set it. You're supposed to set it to 10 degrees advanced. So I'm going to set that like this. And then when I point this down here, it should be at zero degrees on the crankshaft. Which you can see the, well, you can barely see it. The, it's so hard to, 
So you can see it right there, those two little hash marks. That's right at the zero degree mark. That's just a way you can do it with the light. If you wanna do it the old school way, you can just set, set this to zero on your gun. See the arrow right there? It's set to zero. And then when I point this down there, it should be at the, neg at the uh, 10 degrees BTDC, which is the Ford Top Dead Center. And you can see that it is See how it changed? Because it, what, that, what this little dial does is it actually changes the strobe for you. So if you want to set it to 10 degrees advanced, you would move this little arrow up. And then you would line the timing mark up at the zero degree indicator on here, which it is. All right. So we got this. We got that set up. So now, let's see if I can get my idle a little bit lower. It should be it should be closer to around 800. So I'm going to go to this little idle adjusting screw right here, and we're going to go clockwise. very slowly here it drop Okay, so now that I have my timing set up at 10 degrees before top dead center with it in diagnostic mode, I'm going to take it out of diagnostics mode and the timing should reset, the ECU should reset the timing to about 16 to 17 degrees before top dead center. Hopefully this will work. Okay. It's good the car didn't die on me. Usually it dies on me. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to move this timing because it's hard to see the little indicators on the plastic cover. So I'm going to move this dial itself to 17 degrees. Each indicator is two, four, six, seven right there. All right, so now I'm going to point it at the crank fully and it should still be at zero okay yes there it is burn like a kitten now all right so I'll set this back to zero degrees just to look at it so you can see if you don't have a timing light like this um, and it will, this should read about 17 degrees on this indicator. All right, that's perfect. I wish you guys could see down in there uh, better, but I'm, you know, you just can't do it. I can't stick this phone down in there because of the, my camera down in there because of the fan and all the moving parts. But the timing light is looking good. Here's what it sounds like. Man, it's running good. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I can't even tell you how excited I am right now because it has been a while uh, since I've driven this car because I told myself I wasn't going to drive this car until I get this timing thing situated. I could have drove it, um, you know, kind of half-assed, but um, I didn't really want to do that, you know, because I just wanted the car to be perfect uh, when I drove it. And uh, and finally, we have the timing set up so the, car, so the engine is running at, uh, at optimum level right now. For now, uh, yeah, and I, you know, I got the TPS set up properly. 
Uh, special thanks to uh, John D. 86 at uh, over at Club 4AG. Um, he really uh, kind of walked me through this. Um, you know, setting up that throttle body I think was a huge part of it. <clears throat> and um, with the idler screw as well, he kind of gave me some information about that. But um, yeah. I'm so excited right now, and uh, I'm just just happy that finally it's over, and I finally get to take it off these wheel cradles, get it on the ground, and uh, take it out for a spin. Um, <clears throat> it's got, you know, I got everything working good. I tested the AC as well. AC is working good, you know, with the idling and everything, with as far as with the uh, with the with how the car idles when, while the AC is on, uh, that works that works good. So, um, yeah. Uh, Let's see, anything else I can think of? Not right now. So um, I'm going to uh, end this video here. I uh, appreciate it, guys. Uh, if you would uh, uh, give me a thumbs up and also uh, think about subscribing if you enjoy this kind of content, um, AE86 stuff. You know, my restoration is done, but there's always going to be things to do, you know, on these cars. So, um, you know, don't, uh, don't fret. Have a great evening and we'll see you next time.